Here, okay, here. Hey, Cesare, how are you? Hello, hi, I'm fine, and you? Good, good. Uh, so, Cesare, um, what I maybe as a, as a start, can we have maybe a, an introduction of you and maybe of also the company? So, you are from Beyond Clinical, uh, not Beyond Quality, but Beyond Clinical. Ooh. We are the yeah. same thing. It's like a brotherhood, so don't, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same thing. And uh, yes, we are we are uh, the part of the two sister companies that provides the uh, consulting for the uh, clinical uh, affairs. Let's say so. So, Pion Quality is, is about regulatory affairs, comes and we provide the uh, support for the clinical affairs. So, clinical evaluation, post market clinical follow up, clinical studies, and uh, the, the the package. Okay, so. Um... The, um, um, we, I'm, I'm working also with you a bit on, on some uh, of the clinical activities. Uh, so mm -hmm. I can say that, yeah, you have really a lot of knowledge to provide here. So what we will do Thank is you. that we we'll try to focus on PMCF. But uh, what um, we'll do first is to show, as I call it, the cloud uh, where mm -hmm. all the, the things are there and to see where PMCF is on this cloud. So mm -hmm. uh, we prepared just a slide. Uh, you send me a slide to show... Uh, let me show that. Um, yeah, here. So we have yes. created a slide to show um, where, if I can say, PMCF or all the other activities are. Mm -hmm. So can you help us to understand where, where all this is? Yes, so this is like a representation of the uh, clinical life cycle uh, of, uh, for a medical device. So uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, as a first step, you, you create a CP in uh, in which you, you plan your uh, clinical evaluation, right? And you can have uh, different inputs to this CP. And um, in particular, the, 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 the king of processes, which is the risk management that's support, supposed to give the main input to the, to the planning of the clinical activities. But you could have uh, input from a usability. You might have a strange device, which has a special usability feature that you might want to test clinically or biocompatibility, some unknown uh, materials that you have to test. Uh, you have a new uh, sterility procedure that has not been documented before. That's something that you might want to clinically test uh, or clinical particular uh, electrical safety issues that uh, that uh, that uh, are relevant for the clinical feature of the device that could all be input to the CP and uh, once you have the CP then you can collect your data and evaluate them in the uh, report and so from the report you might have uh, outputs that go back to these um, um, other processes that are, that are going on. You might have outputs to the risk management or to the usability and, and so on. And if everything goes fine with the clinical evaluation, then you can, and obviously the technical documentation is also fine, you can then cross this line, which is bringing the device into the market. So everything that happened until this line, until this arrow, it's uh, pre-market. And uh, once you cross uh, this line, your device is on the market and you can start the post-market activities. The most famous one is uh, post-market surveillance, right? And um, you can either see, see it as a separate activi uh, activity or as part of the post-market surveillance, you have the post-market clinical uh, follow-up. The reason why it's shown like this is that there are lots of uh, intersections uh, between the thing, uh, the, the, the two post-market activity, but they are also not exactly uh, the same. And you're supposed to proceed in the same way. You create a post-market clinical follow-up plan, which is part can be part of the post-market uh, surveillance plan. And then you will have a report. And uh, uh, this report uh, should go back into the uh, clinical evaluation. Okay. This is, uh, and, and then you can continue uh, in uh, with this uh, path throughout the um, life cycle of the product. So continue uh, developing it. The, um, so uh, we are right now at the point where the notifying body, in particular, are putting much more attention compared to before to the on the CP and CR. Uh, so now the, this, there's uh, much more auditing of these two documents. It's, it's something new. But also the PMCF plan is slowly uh, uh, raising, gaining importance. Uh, first, since the publication of the 2020 MDCG 2027, right? Is it seven? 
which uh, like provided a, a template. And uh, so right now we are at the step in which Notified Embody are, first of all, asking the year post marketing and follow-up plan and starting to check it, especially if it contains uh, studies. And uh, the report at the moment, since uh, there, there are still not many companies that uh, are uh, at the point of uh, creating a post market clinical follow-up report, uh, it's, it's, I, I cannot say uh, actually much more than uh, they are in the templates, but we are starting to get the first feedback concerning the post market clinical follow-up plans that they are. It's, uh, it, it's it's gaining in importance, let's say so. And I'm sure that like in a year from now, that's going to be a, something that's going to be audited uh, well, like uh, so, CRCP now. So maybe maybe a question. So um, PMCF, um, is it something that is uh, coming because of the UMDR or it was already existing before? So before there was already a PMCF, but uh, what under MDD, when one was speaking under PNCF, it was always meant a study. So it was a post-market clinical follow-up study. Okay, so there is a guideline, a MEDEF guideline, uh, the 2.2.L, which is still very, very re relevant for uh, deciding, it's still the state of the art for assessing when a device uh, needs a post-market clinical follow-up study. So that means like a, a clinical investigation, a post-market clinical investigation. And that's what was meant with post-market clinical follow-up under MDD. And with uh, MDR, this concept has been expanded into a set of activities that, uh, that include also the study, but are not limited uh, to that, and uh, uh, that go beyond uh, the study. Okay, so okay. Th this is the main difference. Yeah, so um, um, regarding the PMCF, so mainly uh, as this is something that was kind of existing before, uh, there is just a difference in terms of study, but um, before we can decide to have or not have a PMCF, now we have to have a PMCF anyway. Yes, yeah, so with a method 212, one could assess whether one needed a PMCF study. Uh, if you didn't have a PMCF if you didn't need a PMCF study, then you were practically done with your PMCF activities. Okay. And now, instead, for any product, independently of the class or uh, of the type of product, you need to have a post-market clinical follow-up study. Uh, so, sorry, a post-market clinical follow-up plan. What you don't necessarily need to have is a post-market clinical follow-up study, which is the, probably the most uh, costly and time-consuming part of the post-market clinical follow-up activities. But you still need to have a, uh, a plan in which to you describe the other activities that you're going to uh, do uh, in the during the post-market. So we have a first question here from um, David Sol Solomon. So uh, is a PMCF plan needed for a class one product? Yes. So is it so dependent on class? Do we need that for this class and not this class, etc.? No, you need one for any uh, product. So uh, it's part of the technical documentation. So once you do this, you are done with the CR, essentially you can create the first version of your post-market clinical follow-up plan. I mean, it's not, especially for a small product, it's not necessarily something too complicated uh, to do, right? So it becomes uh, it, it becomes more complicated when you have like uh, uh, um, uh, surveys or studies that you're starting to plan, but you can also limit yourself to uh, activities that are sort of redundant with what is already done in the CR, in CR or in the post-market surveillance, which are literature searches or uh, searches into the um, uh, adverse events that, uh, databases like mode. Okay, so uh, as as so, th the documentation for the uh, clinical affairs is extremely redundant. So it's very redundant with the technical documentation, but it's also very redundant in itself. So in the CR, you might have many things that you already have in the CP, and in the post market uh, clinical follow up, you might have many things that you already have in the in the CR. Uh, it's it's built intentionally like this. So, uh, and because uh, I think the idea is that there you have reviewers that look separately only at this document and they want to have a sort of self-contained, they don't have to go back to the technical documentation. Then 
They don't have to uh, read the CR if they are just evaluating the uh, uh, post-market clinical follow-up plan and so on. So the, there's lots of redundancy, but uh, you always need a plan. And this plan doesn't have to be huge. You can also plan something small uh, for the uh, for small product with uh, little risk. Remember that there are some activities that sometimes... Uh, uh, manufacturer plan to do in any case, but they just don't plan to uh, like uh, document. So probably like uh, user surveys is what most companies are already planning in some form of the other because they want to get some some feedback uh, on it. Then it's just uh, not a gigantic step to just say, okay, now we formalize this step, we make uh, a questionnaire, we plan it, and then we assess the results in a, in a post-market clinical follow-up to see, for example, if anybody's using the device uh, consistently out of the, uh, the intended purpose. Now, because one of the uh, goal of the post-market clinical follow-up, for example, is to uh, check whether anybody is systematically using the device off-label. And so okay. that's something that's, uh, that can be done with a, a sort of questionnaire. One could really ask uh, to the users, so what do you use, uh, for which type of indication do you usually use this type of device and see whether it matches really what you have in the, in, in the indication of use. And you see that, I don't know, 20% of the doctor use the device for an indication that you don't have in, the, in, the, in your intended purpose, then you can think, okay, actually, either there is something in my information material that is giving this idea, or they not spontaneously want to use the device for this, I probably need to uh, um, assess whether my device is clin clinically relevant also for this indication. And uh, okay. this is uh, something that, uh, that it's, it's not a, a gig gigantic step um, and uh, it's useful and can be easily planned uh, in, as yeah, a so it's just, it's just the plan that should be done for this kind of devices that are really uh, low risk um, yes. Because uh, mainly, yeah, uh, it's just so, it's, uh, as you said, it's redundant with maybe some some other activities that you are doing. So you have already this data. It's just that you have to mention that on a on a PMCF uh, PMCF plan. Yes. Um, so the, the the minimum that is going to be probably accepted is uh, uh, literature uh, searches. So that's also okay. something that needs to be planned in PMCFP. But if I think adding like a patient uh, a user survey, it's something that's oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, another question from Salma, is PMCF applicable to all medical devices or only medical devices that come into contact with uh, the patient? So uh, PMCF, yeah. plan and report, you're going to have it for any medical device. It's, part, it's like uh, CPCR, so you have to have it. It's uh, no discussion. And uh, the, the, the worst thing that can be is not having it. Okay. So... Um, and but it's not, it's not the, the fact that it's touching the patient or not touching the no. patient is not coming into account here. It's not uh, coming into, it's not important. So yeah. I, I just wonder whether, for, I mean, for, for higher class of devices, it's, it could be more likely that you get, uh, that you need a study maybe. But uh, post-market clinical follow-up, you need for every device. Okay. Um, another one from uh, Anurag for... How is PMCF related with PMS, Vigilance mm -hmm. Plan Report, and PSUR? So there is, there is lots of intersection because uh, all the uh, complaints that you get uh, could, could also be clinically relevant. And also the, the adverse events that you find in mode, for example, for similar product or for the device class, uh, they could, uh, you could find two types of information. Information that it's uh, just uh, uh, technical. So someone reports, I have a software bug or they report you a software bug that, that makes the device uh, turn off, I don't know, uh, un unintentionally, or they could report a side effect or an adverse event. event. In, the, in the, if the first type of information, it's essentially, uh, technical information that is mostly interest, interesting for the uh, post-market surveillance, you might need to plan an, uh, a software update, but it doesn't affect the clinical evaluation. And the second type of information, someone reports uh, an, uh, un a new adverse event or uh, a new clinical risk or a side effect, then uh, that's something that you might have to uh, um, evaluate clinically. So uh, it could 
it could trigger some a new study or uh, something that you have assess, to assess, and uh, it should yeah, at a certain at a certain point go back into the clinical evaluation. But that, that's the big intersection intersection part. Then you also have parts that are completely separate, like the study. You would it's only part of, of the post market clinical uh, follow up and not of of the PMCF. Uh, so, sorry, post-market surveillance. In the MDR, I think it explicitly says that the post-market clinical follow-up plan can be part of the post-market surveillance plan. So yeah, you can you can put it inside if you want. But honestly, I don't know if this is a particular uh, advantage. Um, what you can definitely do uh, also for the CR, for the post-market clinical follow-up report, you, you can reference some part of the uh, post-market uh, uh, surveillance plan or report if this is uh, necessary. And if possible, when you reference, add it as an annex so that the, you make the document as uh, self-contained as, as possible. Okay, so same type of question here, but uh, maybe I don't know if you will have a different thing. So how is a PMCF study plan different from a PMS plan then if it doesn't have to have a study and report? Well, in the PM, PMS, you don't necessarily plan uh, uh, literature review. You don't plan uh, a patient surveys. You don't plan uh, user surveys. Uh, you don't plan a, a device registry, uh, for example. This is all stuff that you plan in the post-market clinical follow-up plan. In the post-market uh, uh, surveillance, you would uh, you would uh, plan the search in mode. You uh, you describe uh, how you uh, gather advanced events concerning your device. You would do the trend uh, evaluation, uh, and uh, and you in the report you would evaluate that. But uh, that's uh, separate. Yeah. Okay, so Ralph has an interesting question. So um, how do you include surgical instruments class 1R, so orthopedic or spinal procedure, in your PMCF? Uh, mm, so wh why should that, this be different? Because the this instruments is... are here for kind of surgery. So for example, the performance will be maybe, for example, to make a, an implant, uh, to mm -hmm. place an implant, like a knee implant or this kind of thing. So the performance, how you will be including these surgical instruments in the PMCF when at the end we are really looking at the knee um, implant or the implant that we will be installing as uh, the performance one. Okay, this is not really a, a question just for the PMCF. This is a, a, a question for the World Clinical Evaluation. How, how do I, I highlight uh, risks that arise specifically from my device and not from the device that are connected uh, uh, to it. Uh, it, it doesn't just have to do with uh, post-market clinical follow-up. It's a generic question. So if I want to do a study in which I want to isolate the risk that come from my devices, which is usually used with other 20 devices, how do I build a study that, that highlights that? Uh, it's obviously, I mean, it, it could impact a post-market clinical follow-up study, but it's uh, it, it impacts more generally the whole uh, clinical evaluation, how, how do I isolate the performance and, and risk of, of my device? So mainly we can see that um, if your device was well um, installed, if there was no complication out uh, afterwards, etc., it means that your instruments has done the correct job. For example, when we have a guide that should cut the knee, if I can say, to place the implant, if the guide was not performing correctly, then the knee would not be installed correctly. So this is many yeah. so Yeah, it depends on, on, on the device. You know, there are devices for which it's not trivial to uh, draw problems back to the device, okay? Especially if you have a chain, it's not always, so you might say something is happening to the patient, but it's not easy for the doctor to say, ah, it, it was due to this, because there are so many steps in the process that uh, it's not automatic to 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 say okay th this is where the fault is. So if you really want to be to do it well, you should try to is isolate only the effect of your device. You are, you theoretically, you would uh, you would do a controlled uh, study in which you have uh, your device. So the same system with your device and the the same system with another device or without the this part, and then you could really isolate the things that are relevant just for. Uh, for this device, but this is not uh, doesn't have to do with a CAS or with a post-market clinical follow-up. This is generically for the clinical uh, evaluation strategy of, of okay. that specific device. And this is sometimes a, a 
problem for some devices because it's not easy to gather uh, data in for for some type of devices that don't uh, don't have the direct direct effect. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you if it's clear. Okay, uh, next one. So, uh, will you provide an example of what could be a PMCF plan, and if there is no study needed, seems to do not with PMCF PMS plan. So, yes, uh, I think this is. It's not, it's not redundant. Uh, as we said, we have some differences. Uh, for a PMCF plan template or example, um, I have a PMCF plan template. I mean, it's the one that, that uh, is provided by the MDCG. Uh, yes. So I have so one on my shop. We, yeah, we, we, we took, for example, the, the MDCG template and we reformulated it to be a bit more intuitive also in the way that it's 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 presented and to link to what to the cpncr documents that we already have and uh essentially the, the steps are, are listed there and uh i, I mean i've informed i mean the, the the activities that are proposed are the screening of scientific literature service from user service from patients device registries and pmcf uh, studies these are the main one i mean probably someone can think of something different from their own device. But apart from the screening of scientific literature, which, which also includes the mode search and the Bay Farm or H, 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 HRMI, uh, HMRA and, uh, I don't know, Swiss Medic, uh, which is like a type of overlap, the rest, it seems to me to be quite post-market clinical follow-up specific. Because uh, um, what you're going to ask the user it's uh, there are going to be questions regarding the clinical use of, of, of the device and uh, so that's pretty uh, specific there is some some degree of redundancy yeah that's true it, yeah. It, the thing is there could be some data that are relevant for the post-market surveillance report and for the post-market clinical follow-up uh, yeah. report okay um can we consider a real work evidence study as part of post marketing clinical um, post marketing follow up study yes absolutely so the, the, typically the the post market clinical follow up studies are observational studies mm -hmm. in which you can really uh, get data from the uh, use of the device on the field uh, and uh, so it's uh, it's intended use. It's the intended use of the product. It's not you have not to yes. add anything else. It's really what you is written on the instruction for use. What it is for. What is this? So it's as you said, or just observational. So yes, because if, if someone con if someone conducts a post market clinical follow up study, but outside the scope of the intended purpose, it becomes a pre market study. So uh, you are in the post market clinical follow up studies is within the scope of the intended purpose of the device. So if you have a certain patient patient population and then you are performing a, a, a study with a device which is certified, but in a, in another pa patient population compared to what you specified, I don't know you you had children, then that's a that that becomes a pre market study. And the big difference is that uh, observational study you don't need to. Um, uh, notify the authorities for that. You you conduct, uh, collect the data, and if there are adverse uh, uh, events which are directly linked to the device, you would report them as, as they are reported in BFAM or mode. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it's a study that you don't, uh, for which you don't ask authorita authorization except for the uh, ethic commission. Instead, for the pre market studies or studies of label, you have to have the ethic commission authority, uh, 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 sorry, ethic commission approval, and on top of that, you also uh, notify the authorities that you are conducting them, and you are dealing with the full adverse events uh, notifications. So, so also, let's say, if a patient gets a, a flu while using your device, and there's an, it has nothing to do with your device, you are going to report that either as an adverse event, and you are going to explain that it's not linked to your uh, device. So uh, we have the the maybe question that is uh, is ethical committee approval required for PMCF study in hospitals? Uh, yes. So um, even if you are using the product within its intended purpose, it is a CEMR product. It's authorized to be used, etc. You are when you are doing well, a PMCF study, then you have to have a, an authorization to do a PMCF uh, study. 
Yeah, actually, it's, it's not the company that asks uh, the authorization from the uh, ethic uh, approval in that case. It's, uh, it's the, doc the doctors that collect the study, uh, the data, sorry. So okay. Because it's not any anymore like a study sponsored by the, the, the company. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the doctor collecting the data. And uh, sorry, Papa. yes, my son. Me? Okay. Hey, <laughs> comic like. Okay. And yeah, it's a bumper. Okay. And uh, so it's it's in in this case, it's the doctor that is getting the ethic approval for conducting the study. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think it's it's important then to have that. So is it something that you have to mention on the PMCF study or not at all? Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's it's important, especially when you report the data, just to say that the study was uh, approved ethically. But I mean, okay. oh, oh, there are also some type of devices, especially if I think of apps, uh, you know, where you can just collect uh, data from patient. In that case, you want uh, have, uh, an ethical approval, but you you also want to have a doctor uh, um, uh, involved, uh, mo most likely. So in that case, obviously, you're going to get the data from the uh, this real uh, world uh, evidence, and you're, you're going to analyze it in, in the case. But if in the case you have a, in which you have a doctor involved that is going to evaluate something in that's relevant for the study, the doctor should have the ethical approvals. Okay. Um... Mona is asking, PMCF evaluation report is only for MDR or also for MDD? So it's called a post-market clinical follow-up report is only for MDD, sorry, for MDR, not for MDD. Sorry, can you repeat? So post-market clinical follow-up report is only for the MDR. Okay. So yeah, also the so post-market I... clinical follow-up plan, you don't need a, a, a separate document, post-market clinical follow-up plan for the MDD. You might okay. have to plan a study in the CR, but you don't need a, a necessarily a separate document for it. So post-market can follow up plan and report, they are MDR specific. Okay. Um, I think we answered a bit of this question. So is, is PMCF um, shall be done based on a normal instruction for use or to consider also potential use errors? Uh, so, this, I'm not sure I understand this. Because so, I think I think when we are doing the PMCF uh, study or whatever, we are saying, oh, we have some residual risks that can happen. Mm -hmm. So the idea also of a PMCF is to e identify if those risks are really happening or not, or if those things are, are, are coming. So we should have some kind of sets of risks that we already know a bit. Uh, Yes, but I mean, it should, everything should happen within the internet purpose if it's an observational study. Okay? Yeah. So, and uh, so it's like doctors using it the device as intended. They would use it probably maybe in any case. And then they, you get data from these uh, applications in the, uh, of the device in the, in, on the field. Uh, this can tell you something about the uh, errors and the uh, uh, risks. But uh, I'm not sure how to read this. Uh, sh should be done on normal so, instruction for use. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I think it's, it's that. It's mainly that. Yes, you should do that on a normal instruction for use. You should not create a new instruction for use with new identification no. or whatever. It's exactly the same. That it's post market, so it's mainly exactly the thing that were approved by the authorities or by notified bodies before use. Then this is what you have to use, and you have not to create a new one or other ones for exactly. for that. Um, okay, uh, Marcus is asking, can you elaborate on PMCF surveys targeting patients uh, directly in when you reach out directly to patients with a question? So mainly when we are sending them just a survey, such PMCF surveys are very close to become a clinical investigation with all rules and regulations that comes with it. Yes, sure. uh, I, I mean, it's, it start to get a bit uh, in, the, uh, in the direction of a clinical investigation. But uh, so let, let's say so if if it's if it's uh, let's say let's say it's it's a uh, it's a device on the market now you, you use it and you want to uh, measure the reduction in in a, in a pain following the use of your your device it's it's going to be the doctor that's going to formulate this uh, this uh, question and then provide you the data 
Okay, so it is it is a clinical investigation. It's uh, it's uh, it's not an interventional study that you report to the authorities, and it's the, the doctor that has asked the ethics committee committee for the uh, approval to do this uh, this type of uh, of uh, data uh, summary. So it's using the device as intended, and at the end, it's going to collect some uh, some uh, some data from uh, from the patient, and that is a clinical investigation. On addition, you could uh, the company could have. Uh, could do some also some direct uh, surveys like uh, it, you know also marketing aspects or if the uh, the, the the patient is overall satisfied with the performance of the device i mean this is something a bit more in on the side of marketing than on the clinical study and that could also be done uh, directly by by the company but if it's like something clinical then it would be the doctor uh, collecting this, this uh, information within this observational study. But PMCF survey mainly, uh, we don't need an authorization from any authority for that. No, you don't need an authorization for the authority, as long as it's within the scope of the intended purpose. Okay, I think we answered also that. Uh, so uh, Rizlan, so uh, Sirawi, which says, can we merge a PMS plan and a PMCF plan for a class one device? You, you uh, according to the MDR, you can always merge them. So for it's, uh, it's it, for everything. So it says it says that the PMCF plan can be part of the PMCS my of the PMS plan. My assumption, however, is that since the MC, DCG has released a, a guideline for that, is that the notifying body okay for class one, it's it's not going to be important, but. Uh, for the uh, starting from class two A, the notifying body are gonna sort of expect that you have a document called post marketing and follow up plan, and I I I think it's probably easier to just split them, uh, and it's gonna become less stand less standard like this. Let's say so. Yeah. So All, so also the post market. Sorry. No, no. I was just saying, that be careful because yes, yeah, sometimes we we know that in the regulation it says that, but the other the auditors are always looking for having their own interpretation sometimes of the of the of the regulation. And when they see that there is a guidance that says here is a PMCF plan and here is a document, they want you mainly to use that because it's mainly what they know and what they are so, using. So, 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 so let's say probably it's not gonna save you much time because it's gonna be this, the MDCG uh, template within the PMCF plan and it's, it's going to be the same uh, at that point just split them and uh, make the notifying body happy uh, and uh, also the post market clinical follow up report it, it could be included in the in the CR actually uh, okay uh, and Rag again uh, will the EU MDR have its own database on PMCF literature along PMS similar to mode of P uh, FDA or does it Cover on the Udamit. Yes, I. Th uh, uh, Udamit yes, has, has a section it's, for it's vigilance. It's gonna be. It's gonna be okay. under the. If uh, honestly, I I don't know too much because I haven't used it uh, yet. But uh, it should be under the Udamit. The, the idea is to build to to integrate all these systems that now are uh, left to the single nations into one. Uh, uh, European uh, database where one can uh, check uh, clinic, clinical studies going on, um, no, uh, classification, a bit like, like exactly like uh, with the FDA, uh, classific product classification and uh, adverse events. And so, yeah, but it's, it's not. Reporting, vigilance reporting will be there, so it will be kind of like of the, the mode. I mode, don't know yes. if there will be specifically, uh, if this will be available to the public. The PMCF documentation. I don't I think. No, okay. If that's what is meant in the question, oh no, I don't think you will find the PMCF uh, documents. But I don't. I mean, I don't think you find them for the FDA either. Yeah, I don't think in the FDA is mainly the vigilance for the modes. It's mainly the vigilance that is happening. So, so um, it's the, exactly the vigilance you report. That. Yes, you will have that on your media for sure. Yeah. Okay, next question, Siam uh, Perla. So is it possible to skip or limit the studies, so safety and performance, during initial CE mark procedure with the justification that planning the, that planning the same in PMCF plan? Sorry. So the, que the answer is yes, if you can convince them to find body. So if you can convince them to, that you can bring the device on the market and then collect part of the data <laughs> afterwards, Obviously, and there are some advantages in uh, doing this. Uh, 
but uh, yes, the, the the point is the 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 challenge there is to, to reach the, the point where you say, okay, I have enough data, and uh, I'm missing some. I will collect it afterwards. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, we it have usually some works. That are asking that, yeah. Uh, it usually works uh, pretty well with uh, like uh, uh, you know the devices like uh, artificial intelligence uh, software that works somehow anyways on uh, retrospective uh, data because it's uh, you, you first collect data then you 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 test your your device because they are somehow almost a, they are a medical device but uh, that works a bit like an in vitro diagnostic let's say so you you take you take a sample like an image or something from your uh patient and you analyze that okay for that type of device it, it works fine you can say okay we have a first database and we are collect, gonna collect more data and post market can follow up that can is a good ar argument yeah um quickly so um antonio so uh, mainly um about custom made device but for pms so um, yeah, it's not the topic, but let's answer that quickly. Uh, so about a manufacture, uh, custom made medical device that are manufactured for one exclusive person based on medical prescription. How is it pos possible to perform a PMS and what data collected from PMS can be applied to other custom made devices? So I think the, the question there is more for custom medical devices. How do you perform a clinical evaluation? Because they are made for one person. So your patient population is one Patient. No, 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 no. Uh, you have also to do a PMS for a custom. Yeah, no, but wait, wait, and but I, th oh, the, what I want to say, so for, for uh, it could be complicated for clinical evaluation, but for PMS you can still do it. You can still uh, collect adverse events uh, concerning the uh, uh, custom. So the idea is, for example, to contact each patient one by one and to ask them to provide some data, or. Well, I mean, if they have adverse events, you will have them like uh, all other medical devices, which is yeah, okay. I mean, there was a, the part, an issue is, with the device. Yeah, the idea here is to collect the complaints or vigilance reporting or mm -hmm. whatever that is related to, to the devices. So here you can do that. Um, but I think you still have this um, proactive action to, to, to do, if I can say, within your... Uh, yeah, but it's, it's the same like with uh, the... With, uh, non-custom-made medical devices, yes. Yeah, so, so like a survey or like a, just a, a question to ask, yeah. yeah. Um, shall I consider different user experience during PMCF? Uh, yes. Uh, in both during your study or if you do surveys, uh, if, if there are different standard users, different perspective through which you can use the device, yes, you should consider them. So mainly... Um, uh, should should the user be trained or no? They don't need to be trained because it's obvious how how it is working. I mean, this is something that you have. Well, it's, where... it's, if it's a, if it's a post market study, the uh, the user is using the device as intended, and if he, you specify that the user needs to be trained, it should be a trained user. Yeah, exactly. So it's gonna be uh, just like any user. It's gonna be just like any client that has bought the device. Uh, no difference. Okay. So if, if a training is uh, planned for the in intended user, then yes, it is the, you, you train them. They, they have right. to be trained. Um, Yoki Shang, so please offer example for the methods and criteria that shall, um, shall be output on PMCF activities and report. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I mean, as I was saying, I have our template in front of me. Uh, I mean, obviously, screening of... Uh, Scientific literature. This is very much overlapping with the with the CR. Um, you could also check. You could target it more like checking publications that maybe are using my device once uh, once it went on on the market. Uh, but it's this is very much redundant with the CR checking that the state of the art is uh, up to date. Uh, if there's anything else that put puts in question the benefit risk uh, profile of the device, uh, other side effects for the product class. This is very much overlapping. And I mean, I think it's, it's, if it's structured pretty well in the NCG uh, 2027, you say which type of activity, although it's, uh, it's not exactly clear why some are called general activity and some specific, but they, they provide this information. Then you say why you need this, uh, to perform this activity, where, uh, where the need comes from. It can be input from the uh, uh, CP, from the CR, and, and from the risk management, and so on. 
Then you say why you're performing the activity and they have a, a list. I can read here, like confirming the safety of the medical device, confirming the performance of the medical device, identifying previously unknown side effects, monitoring the identified side effects and contraindication, identifying and analyzing emergent risks, ensuring the continu continued acceptability of the benefit ratio, identify possible uh, systematic misuse or off-label use of the device. So this is what the list. And, uh, and then you say uh, with, which type of uh, device you're going to uh, conduct this post-market clinical uh, activity with. It could be your device, but it could also be something from the device class. And this is also this service from the users, service from the patients, uh, data registries, and post-market clinical follow-up studies. So this is the package that they propose in the, in the guideline. Yeah, sorry, you were you are cutting just um, oh, one sorry. or two seconds before, so sorry, um, maybe there was a, just a disconnection here. Um, okay, next one from Ranjit. Uh, how often PMCF study uh, has to be conducted if we are looking at safety and efficacy? It's hard to say it uh, uh, like, to globally like this. It's like answering the question, how often should the uh clinical evaluation be uh, updated and this depends on the type of the device uh, that you have i mean definitely the cycle post market clinical follow up plan report needs to be uh, done before you update this uh, the uh, cr so it needs to be done within this uh, cycle of the clinical e evaluation for the uh, for class 2b and 3 right you you need to have uh, the psu so there you will also do it annually so exactly um sorry here uh, if the data is saved automatically in the system used for treatment do you still need ethical committee approval to analyze the data so uh there i would say uh no, but you have to inform the patient and get the agreement to use this data. This becomes more like a data uh, protection issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, shall I consider the geographical aspects for end user during PMCF if my product is distributed worldwide? This depends on the output from, from the clinical evaluation. If you have clinical aspect that depends on uh, 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 geographical aspects, then could be yes. For example, uh, skin type. If you, uh, if you have a, la a laser device that could co cause discoloring in certain uh, skin types, that might be something that you have to consider, yes. It's hard to say it's uh, overall. For some devices, it's absolutely relevant. And for other, it's, uh, it's relevant. But here, when we are doing a PMCF, it's only for Europe, or can we do that outside of Europe? Uh, oh, this is a good question. This honestly, I cannot. I don't know. I don't know if FDA requires a, a similar product uh, process. I I cannot tell. Uh, but also within Europe, you you could have differences that uh, might be relevant. If you have a, a algorithm that was tested only in a certain patient population, with, uh, which have, and you take into account some uh, uh, country-specific uh, information, then you, you might have to do something which is uh, regional also for, uh, for um, uh, the PMCF. Yeah. OK. Um Vanessa is asking, so um, as for the sample size estimation for PMCF, is there any specific recommendation? Uh, just like uh, uh, any uh, clinical study, the same approach. So if you can plan your... So the, the difference that, you know, in the observational study, you, has, you have less control over uh, the, 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 the patient somehow. So you, you, you're not really actively recruiting uh, and, and so on. So you have less... Uh, uh, less control there. Uh, you might set inclusion exclusion criteria to, to just uh, and wait until you have enough uh, enough uh, patient that fit exactly your question. But uh, the procedure is like any other uh, clinical investigation uh, plan. You you say what your goal is, what your hypothesis is, what uh, which type of patients you would need, uh, which type of uh, outcome, and uh, um, you can compute the sample size. 
Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's not specific to PMCF. I have made, I think, if I remember, a video with um, um, Smart Trial, which is a software for, for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And they are helping, if I can say, on, on doing this kind of uh, evaluation. But uh, yeah, it's, there is no difference, if I can say, for, for each, um, each way to make a sample size. Um, okay, maybe a summary here with Anurag again. So uh, PMCF is PMCF mandatory for SAMD irrespective of classes, or can we can be skipped with the rationale otherwise? Yes, as, as the, same, uh, the same in, uh, in the European language are the software medical devices. And yes, they also need a post-market follow-up, like any other device. Yeah, so um, as we said before, a PMCF plan is needed for every product. It's not only for, um, for class 1, 2A, or 2B, or whatever. It's really for every product. Uh, it's just the... Uh, the the fact that the PMCF study can be skipped yes. because you have enough rationale to say we don't need that, but the PMCF plan should be avail available for for every product. Um, what if a new side effect appears which hasn't been concluded in PMCF? Um, yeah, I mean may maybe during the PMCF uh, we have find some new side effects. Okay, then you need to update your clinical evaluation uh, report and take this in new information into account. So uh, do you need to uh, do a new interventional study or uh, does this change the benefit risk analysis of your device? Uh, out, maybe you have even to update your uh, information material because you have to uh, update the list of side effects in your instruction for use, for example, or you have to update your risk analysis and so on. This, this, this is a cascade of uh, uh, changes that, uh, tricked, uh, that is triggered if you find something that is in a post-market clinical follow-up activity. Yeah, mainly here when we have the PMCF error here. So at the end, we have to fill out again the CEP uh, and then to move uh, to finalize the CR. So mainly uh, this is um, the PMCF is feeding the clinical evaluation, so you have to provide the, the data that uh, will be feeding, if I can say, those uh, clinical evaluation. Yeah. Um, if you have not reached your predicted number of participants surveying your PMCF in time for the next year, can you provide an interim report? Uh, so th this is a good uh, question. I mean, right now, uh, I cannot tell you how the uh, uh, sorry, the notifying body is going to react to this. Uh, right now, I guess it's going to be a very case-to-case -case basis. This is my expectation. Uh, but right now, we are at the point where they ask for the post-market clinical follow-up plan and they review it. So it's uh, what's coming next is uh, a bit uh, no, what we're, we're going to see in the next two years. I think. Yeah, I think I think it's something that uh, we we have no experience actually, so we don't know exactly what uh, what the auditor can ask for that. So it's why it's uh, it's really important that uh, that yeah we try and we will see <laughs> try and see. Uh, uh, all quality data source should be considered for the PMCF. Um, so you define on the PMCF plan which data you have to consider, but yes. Uh, well, this some seems like overlapping with the CR somehow. I'm I'm not sure whether I really understand the question because it speaks about quality of data source and PM PMS. So mainly a compliance, vigilance reporting, um, feedback, um, whatever. I mean, any data that uh, quality data that you are collecting. On yes, the you, you, system. you're also supposed, I don't know if, if it's an app and it goes on the Google store to actively check the uh, uh, reports of the, of the user on the Google store if, if someone re reports some, some, some issue, uh, for example, that's, that's some, somewhere something you, you can be proactive at, even if it's not the uh, customer calling you telling there is a problem with the, with the app. Yeah. Um. For an IVD class D, is a PMCF plan required to be updated annually? I, I would have to check the IVDR. I cannot answer it like this, I must say. I... So um, I'm just trying to remember now, do we have a PMCF also under IVDR? I, I think so, yes. But so is it called PMCF because it's not clinical or yes, PMPF? It's, it's, I think it's PMPF. So Post-marketing performance yeah. um, follow-up or report or uh, I don't know. 
I, I have to check it honestly. Like I cannot answer it like 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 this. I need to check in EVDR. We are far from that right now. I think we we yeah, uh, in visual okay. diagnostic <laughs> devices. So the PMCF study can be carried out outside Europe as long as the product indication and or the proposed evaluation will be will not be specific to European population. In this case, I recommend that the NB be communicated. So yeah, mainly it's what we were saying. Pay about. attention to two things, uh, though, that if you if you have a device which is authorized for use in Europe, but uh, it's not authorized for, for use in the country where you conduct the study, you might have to have to certify the uh, device first in this other country or conduct a, a pre-market study in this, uh, in, in this country. So your, your post-market study in Europe could become a pre-market study somewhere else. And uh, whether it's fine to use an, another country or uh, that depends on, on the on the um, on the product. Yeah. So there are products for which that it would be relevant. But uh, if you have an app in uh, German and you go and try to test it in Brazil, someone could complain that the test is not uh, is not fun. Yeah. So exactly. Um, okay. Yasmina uh, Shaibi so asking: Is there any difference in the PMCF regarding class two and two B? Does the PMCF always include uh, clinical investigation validation or literature search on the named device class 2B can be enough? So this depends on uh, uh, the outcomes of your clinical investigation. So if your clinical investigation was really around and you don't need to collect any more clinical data, then uh, you, you won't need to do the clinical uh, study, the clinical investigation. You will not just need to do other activities you cannot do nothing so that's that's it. so you, you can say okay from the clinical point of view everything is fine so i will just try to proactively look for issues by asking okay by uh, actively asking or checking at feedback somewhere where i wouldn't check otherwise i could go to conference and listen if someone has um says something against the use of my device uh, or reports problem uh but uh, and that is independent of whether it's class two A or or two B. And also, it, if you need a clinical investigation, it doesn't depend on whether the class two A or two B, of whether the device class two A or two B depends on your the data that you have. For sure, you know it's it's gonna be easier uh, to make it acceptable for a notified body to say I don't need further data. The lower the class of the device, that's uh, that's uh, linked. Okay. Um, so Johannes Olensberg was asking, so a lot of questions on class one, because I think class one is really, as it's a low risk, do we really need to make all this for low risk device? So uh, which activities would you perform? So literature search, reassess risk evaluation, user survey, all those. So what activity would you do for class one? But first we can already justify to not do uh, a, a study easily for a class one, I suppose. Uh, I, well, no, no, you don't have a, a notifying body auditing the, C, the CR, so it's it's easier to 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 get through that you uh, say I don't need a, a postmodern clinical follow up study. Um, but I mean, in theory, this is left to the to the manufacturer, so to assess the clinical evaluation and to say, do I need uh, more uh, clinical data? And that could be uh, that is not really dependent on the class. That is dependent on the uh, results that you that you get. If you want to keep it really small, yes, you can just propose uh, literature searches as uh, both uh, the uh, scientific papers and uh, uh, databases, and you can do some simple user surveys. And the PMCF plan becomes really small. It takes really nothing to create it. It's very uh, very short. Yeah. Um, so, um, as we said, so for PMCF, um, if you are class one mainly, no authority will, I mean, no authority, no notified body will review that. Uh, do you think the, the authorities of the countries can ask for it? I think at the moment they are not uh, uh, reviewing it yet. So, in, uh, I, I, I don't, I never had feedback uh, on that from the authorities and they don't, uh, ask for it as they ask for the CR. It could be that after the um, the twenty six, this is gonna change, right? Because by yeah. uh, at the moment uh, the authorities only only review MDT still. So 
Okay. That's um, it. So just for uh, information for Arshad so, and everybody, so this is recorded, so it will be provided on the YouTube channel uh, by next week. Uh, so Tuesday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, I don't know for now. Uh, but yeah, it will be provided as a recording, so you can get that uh, with every all the, all the information here. Um, <coughs> Ella, uh, Baker, Locker, sir. So uh, do you have to do a clinical study for software uh, on any medical device? So. So, so I, I would reverse the, uh, uh, the, the, the sentence. It, it, it's, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's all depends on the, uh, on your device and on your clinical, uh, data. So if you have a software that is presenting a therapy, you know, you can have a doctor replacement through an app and, uh, then you have to show that what this, uh, app is saying is correct. So uh, in that case, you all, you you would also need its uh, a clinical investigation. So it's not that because it's a software, it does not need a clinical investigation. So that's the reverse of the sentence. But uh, yes, also software could need a clinical study or a post-market clinical uh, follow-up study, and definitely needs a post-market clinical follow-up plan with some activities. It's, yeah. uh, we have made we have made a previous episode uh, with uh, Cesare also talking about software specifically. Uh, so yeah, we can we can, I can try to find that and put that maybe on the show notes uh, when we will be uh, having the replay. But yeah, software. There is an NDCG guidance on uh, evaluation of software. Uh, so this is also something that, something that you can you can you can find and you can that can help you there. The, the, the only difference for certain type of software is that they resemble sometimes in some way more an in vitro diagnostic device than uh, the, the classical medical devices. But otherwise, it's just any med like any other medical devices. Yeah, exactly. OK, so um, I think we we have no more questions. So uh, it's great. And uh, it's good because it's one hour now so that mm -hmm. we can <laughs> close. Um, so uh, really, thank you for, for your help, uh, Cesare. Um, as um, said, so um, we will have the replay of this episode on the YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any question, you can already connect with me or with Cesare on LinkedIn and uh, ask your question. And we'll try to help you uh, as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, I think as I've said, the PMCF is really a topic that um, uh, is really important. So uh, please try to follow all the advice that we provided to you, so that you will be on the on the right side. If I can say yeah. for for the, all, for the uh, also for the sorry, a small disclaimer. I mean, it is the, everything that has to do with clinical affairs at the moment. It's uh, it's very much in evolution. We see it changing uh, the requirements, changing constantly. Uh, not just in the in the regulations or in the norms, but uh, really also from the way the notifying body approach uh, uh, this topic. So uh, it, it, what we say now might might not be valid in in a yeah. year. I think I mean the fact that you will need a post market clinical follow up plan is gonna stay like that uh, in any case. But maybe some some forms of how you present things they they, they will change and will update uh, in a year. That's that's part of the, of the field. It's uh, it's. Uh, shifting and changing and evolving constantly so yeah there will be maybe a new mdcg guidance or any uh, new yeah. information there is also the interpretation that are doing uh, the notified bodies of some text of some guidance that can be also different from one notified body to the yes. other so it's there is a lot of uncertainty at some time so here but uh, usually it's, it's like it's like steps so there, there's a the moment of chaos and then it reaches like a sort of state of the art uh, level and then there is the next uh, uh, Good. Um, so um, I, I see just a question. So what is the YouTube channel? So you go to YouTube and you just write Easy Medical Device uh, and you have the YouTube channel. Uh, you'll have a lot of videos that we have made already uh, before, a podcast video or video we have made on the LinkedIn Live or other videos we have made anyway. So uh, you can see and um, yeah, it, it's it's a really a source of information if you have any question on medical devices. So uh, please go go there. Um, okay, so if you have any other question, please, as I said, go to uh, ask us directly on LinkedIn uh, or to me or to Cesare, and we can try to help you on that. Okay, so I really thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining, and uh, I'll, I'll see you in another LinkedIn night. So have a good day. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.